same time, simplification. Clarity is to have a clear take on the complexity of some issues. Clarity as for the complexity. It's complex, it's not simple. So we have to deal with all this. So to avoid confusion with complexity and to come with a clear view of the complexity of the issues. And where do we have to do this if it's not universities, with students, with teachers, professors, thinkers, people who are committed to uh, uh, contribute to the future of their society. So let me start with principles. So I'm saying we may agree and you may disagree, but the starting point will help us know where we disagree. If you disagree at the beginning, keep it, write it down, and come back uh, to it uh, during the questions. So the first one is this one. We agree that in the society, and in Canada, for example, you live in a society where the authorities are distinguished. They are separated. So what we are saying here, as we are saying in Europe, or we are saying in the United States of America, whatever is the history, because this is also it's a very important point, that histories are different, memories are different, and collective psychology are different. Even in your country, when you are in Quebec, in the French-speaking area, you don't speak the same. In fact, you can speak the same, but it's not the same mentality. It's not the same understanding. You can see that Paris is not far from Quebec, while you are not, in the English-speaking area, close to this understanding, even when we speak about the secularity of the society. You need to understand that. You need to understand that there is something which is called a collective psychology coming from history, coming from the connections. So when you deal with it, you come with one common point. And the common point is the authorities are separated. Meaning by this, that there is a state or there is political authority which has authorities on anything which has to do with the public sphere. It's what we are negotiating together. And as citizens, there is a mandate to these people to the people who are politicians, or the people who are elected, to do the job for us. It's a negotiated authority and a mandate that is given. And they are accountable. And what is expected, that this authority has nothing to say about the authority of the religious people within their religion. Meaning by this, that the religious authority is protected from within. So here we have something which is a religious community, Christian, Jewish, Muslim community, Buddhist, and these uh, communities, they have their own system. No one has the right to come and to say, this is not the right way to do it. They have their principles, they have their practices, and this is discussed from within, with their own system, their own uh, rules. This is accepted, separated authority. This is the starting point of our discussion. Why am I saying this? Because what is quite clear in the principles of our society, sometimes when it comes to the new one, the Muslims, you have some authority saying, what if you were thinking like this? So who are you to tell us what we have to think? You may disagree with conservative, you may like reformists, but it's not for you to tell us what is the right and what is the wrong. The time of colonization is over. When you have colonizing forces coming to say, these are the good Muslims and these are the bad Muslims. The good Muslims are the people who are negotiating with the colonizers and the bad were the people who are resisting. Very often it was the case. This is not the case now. We have to come to an equal treatment with all, all the citizens. Separation of authority is the first principle. Second point which is quite important, no imposition. So what we are saying from within, for example, la ikraha fiti, we find this in the Quran, there is no compulsion in religious matter, we cannot impose. This is what we have in the Quran. If God had willed, you would have been everyone on earth would have believed. It's not for you to come and to impose this. So we have it from within the religious uh, teaching. But there is something which is quite important. This is protected by the authority of the state. Freedom of conscience, freedom of worship. Freedom of conscience is the individual right, and freedom of worship is the collective one. Meaning by this that the authority of the state is acknowledging the fact that there is an authority there which is to organize yourself from within a religious community, but 
we all agree, no imposition. You are free to believe, free to practice, or free not to practice, or free not to believe. This is something which is quite important, no imposition. No imposition means from anyone, because imposition is not only a religious imposition, it's also sometimes a dogmatic, rationalist imposition. You have to think that way, this is the way you are moderate or modern. No imposition, I'm free. So faith, it's my business, and the public sphere, it's our business together. The last thing which is quite important is, with all this, what am I saying here is we are talking about principles and we are talking about the model. The principles are common to all the Western societies and, and in fact in many other non-Western societies we will find the same principles. Now the models are completely specific. Why? Because the Canadian model, it's not. For example, as I said, the English speaking area, Canadian model, is not the same as the French. There are differences. Now, if you go to Europe, you have as many models as societies or countries. Why? Because this has to do with the principles are translated in a way which has to do with culture, psychology, and history and memory. We all agree on this. But there is something which is quite important here, is that as we understand that the principles are the same and the translations into models, historical models, are different, we also have to be very cautious not to transform principles into ideology or models into ideology. Why am I saying this? Because what we have now is that the separation between faith and uh, the, uh, the public or the private and the public sphere, it's a, a separation of authority. It's not the disappearance of religions as I said. It's not this. And now you have an ideology transforming the model into a philosophical system saying, we don't want to see anything which has to do with faith, anything which has to do with religions, no visibility. And for us, in many European countries, and this is why the Canadian and the Canadian Muslims should understand how lucky they are, because the system within which you are is open for you. It's open for you to respect the laws of the country and at the same time to be faithful to your religion, if you understand where you live. But in many other Western societies, it's not as easy as that. When you have people saying the only good Muslims are the invisible Muslims. So we don't want to, have to see the headscarf, we don't want to see the minarets, we don't want to see the mosques, we don't want to see the schools, we don't want to see you. Be invisible, this is the good Muslim. And this is a problem where the, it's in fact not in the law, it's not in the, the principles, it's not in the model, it's an ideology which is taking over and pro projecting something which is the only way to be a modern or a, a, a true European or Western citizen. And it's very dangerous. Because in fact, we said no imposition. But now it's as if you have something which is an atheistic ideology imposing the only way to be a good citizen. And coming to ask your own conscience, what do you believe? You are not now asked only to, to abide by the law, but you need also, we need to know what you believe. What is your belief? So when you, for example, in some countries you have something which has to do with the test, the citizenship, you know, test of citizenship, is just to enter. Sometimes you are asked about morality. Sometimes you have, for example, what we had in the Netherlands, it's a, a photograph of a half-naked woman say, what do you think about this? So you are not asked about the law, the language, you have, what about this? If you are shot, you are not really a good Dutch. What's that? What's that? Behind it, it's imposition of a way of thinking. It's not the model, it's not the principle. More than that, you have a man and a man kissing each other. What do you think about that? If you say, ah, I was a good lad. Okay, come on. <laughs> <laughs> I was a good lad means I asked the protection of God. Say, so, oh, you asked the protection of God. How can you come in? <laughs> but think about it. Think about it, because this is not only dangerous for the Muslims, it's dangerous for every single citizen in our society. 
if you are deep enough in being able to ask you what do you think and to tell you this is the right way.